Well, good morning. It's Monday morning. I hope you have had an amazing weekend. Uh, we talked uh, Friday about Sabbath day rest. So I hope that you found some time this weekend for some Sabbath day rest. I hope you got to rest a little bit to enjoy family and enjoy friends and enjoy, most of all, enjoy God. I hope it was a great weekend for you. I know we had a wonderful uh, time of worship yesterday at St. Matthew's. I would invite you, if you've not had a chance to watch our worship yesterday, to go back and uh, check us out at stmlive.org. It's a great day. Uh, Tim always does a phenomenal job in our uh, traditional service, and Aaron and Ant and their team the Intersection are just amazing. We are so blessed uh, for that. And I hope you all uh, heard the great news. We're excited at St. Matthew's. Uh, yesterday it was announced that Jason Anding has accepted um, the offer to be our new director of student ministries here at St. Matthew's. We are so excited. We can't wait to welcome Jason uh, to our team in the coming weeks uh, and months. Uh, we're excited about uh, Jason's presence here at our church and all that he's going to be doing for our students and doing for our church. So I hope you uh, got to see that announcement yesterday. We are so, 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 so excited about this new opportunity and this new moment in the life of our church. So be praying for Jason as he transitions in and uh, be praying for our good friends at Grenada First. Uh, Daniel here and their pastor at Grenada First is one of my best friends in the whole world. I'm praying for Daniel. I know that God's going to uh, bless their church in this season as well. Uh, today, um, I'm going to be reading an interesting passage today. I think it's something that's very important for us all to hear right now. We're, we're going to be reading in 1 Peter. Uh, 1 Peter uh, 5. Um, we're going to be reading um, 1 uh, through uh, through 6. We may go into 7. I don't know if we're going 7. 7 so good. We may, we, we may save 7 for tomorrow. It's so good. Um, but I want to read to you 1 Peter 5. Yeah, I think I'm going to save 7 for tomorrow. Um, uh, 1 Peter 5. Um, Golly, seven and eight are so good. I almost want to, almost want to do them. <laughs> They're so good today. But this is this is good stuff right here. First um, Peter uh, five one through six. Now, as an elder myself and a witness of the, of the sufferings of Christ, as well as the one who shares in the glory to be revealed, I exhort the elders among you to tend the flock of God that is in your charge, exercising oversight, not under compulsion but willingly, as God would have you to do it, not for sword gain but but eagerly. Do not lord over those in your charge, but the examples to the flock. When the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And all of you must clothe yourselves in humility in your dealings with one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. That, to me, is one of the key concepts, really, in our faith, is that notion of humility and of humbling ourselves and notice how 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 peter today talks to both ends of the spectrum he says to those of you that have some type of power be in the church i mean he's speaking here to church but let's let's take this notion of power and, and go out with it those of you that have some type of authority whether it be authority in, in in your church setting authority in your home authority in your place of business authority in society or in civil matters don't lord your authority over somebody. Don't, don't, don't act like you're a big deal. Uh, don't act like you're all that all that important. But humble yourself. The Bible says humble yourself. Don't act like you have great authority because when the true authority who is Jesus Christ comes, you want to be humble before him to re receive the crown that he wants to give to you. So humble yourself. So, so those that have a position of authority, be humble. Humble yourself. Then he says to those under authority, in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. All of you must humble yourself. All of us. So if you're in a position of power, be humble. If you're in a, we, a lesser position, if you will, a position submissive to somebody in work, in church, humble yourself. That's been a huge value for me. Uh, in my life. Not that, hear me, hear me. I'm not, I want to be very clear, I'm not saying I'm humble. In fact, quite the opposite. I know that I can run hot. I know that I can get ahead of things. I know that I can get very passionate. I know that I can run far ahead sometimes. So for me, because I tend to not be humble sometimes, because I tend to, whatever, want to toot my own horn, I reckon, or whatever. I tend to be strong-willed and opinionated, stubborn, my wife would say. I, I need authority over me. 
I need authority over me. I'm thankful for our system of government, the United Methodist Church, for instance, where I, I humble myself and I submit myself to my local church, to my SPRC, to my Staff Parish Relations Committee, to my leadership. Those, I don't know how, how many of you, those of you who are Methodists may know this, those of you who aren't may not know this. I, I don't, in the life of the church, I don't really have a lot of power. Like with finance, I can hoot and holler and scream and kick. They don't have to do what I tell them to do. I don't, even, I don't even have a vote. In fact, the only committee in our church that I really have any votes on is our nominations team. Outside of that, I don't have a vote. So in many ways, I submit myself to the authority of my church. I submit myself to the authority of my district superintendent. I submit myself to my authority of my bishop. As long as they don't ask me to violate my conscience, because ultimately, while I do submit myself to them, the ultimate um, person that I will give an account to is God. Um, but on the earth, I submit, I submit myself to my, to my government. Gov, to, as long as my government does not ask me to violate my conscience, I'm going to, Romans 13, you know, submit yourself to the, to the government. So I understand that I need those over me who are going to help me make wise decisions, who are going to, who are going to tame my passions sometimes. I know that I'm strong-willed. And because what I want to do in life is not what I want, but I want to do in life what God wants me to do, that I understand that sometimes that means that I, I need to really humble myself. I need to submit myself to an authority who can help me grow. And by the way, that's not always pleasant. I've, I've, had, I've had conversations with those who, are, who are, uh, have authority over me, and I, is that always a pleasant conversation? <laughs> There's been times that I've left a conversation and I've been upset about it. But I'll reflect later and realize, well, that was exactly the word that I needed to hear at that point. We all need to submit ourselves to somebody. The passage here says humble yourself. We all need to humble ourselves. We all need to humble ourselves. I do, you do, we all do. Because that's not to say that... that there's a difference between being humble to submitting yourself to authority and being degraded. I'm not saying that you have no value. I'm not saying that people should lord. Because, by the way, the text here says, don't lord over people. So if there's someone in your life who has authority over you, who's lording over you, they're not being faithful to what God wants. This is very clear. Those who have authority are not to be arrogant or proud or boastful, but they're to be humble themselves. So those in authority are to be humble. Those who are underneath the authority are to be humble. It's, it, it, Paul has this beautiful notion, well, this is Peter, of course, but Paul, in Ephesians, talks a lot about mutual submission. We, we, we exalt each other. And that's so important. I, I know in, my, in, our, in, in, in our, our family, Holly and I, we make decisions together. Um, in our local church. I make decisions based off conversations with my staff and my team. I, I need people around me who are going to help me get better. We all do. None of us are an island. And none of us need to live by ourselves. So the word today says to humble yourself. We all need to be humbled. We all do. We all do. We all, we all need to. It helps us see more clearly those in our life who we trust who we trust so i trust my sbrc i trust my church i trust my district superintendent i trust my bishop and i, and, and I want to follow their lead uh, i hope as a pastor i'm able to give you the direction that you need and that together we walk together so stay humble uh, there's a beauty in humility christ humbled himself the scripture says that christ humbled himself to death even death on a cross he said i did not come to serve not did not come to be served but to serve so we paint for us that beautiful image of, of humility and service. So that's, our prayer. that's my prayer for me today is that I can be humble. I can submit myself to God above all else because that's, all, that's the ultimate authority is God. So I want to submit myself to authorities over me that submit themselves to God because that's the key. That's where the system messes up is when those who have authority don't submit themselves to God. So I want, as a pastor, I want to submit myself to God so I can leave my church right. And I want my DS and my bishop and my church to submit themselves to God so that they can be led by his authority. And we're all submitting ourselves to God. Everything works perfect. So today, humble yourself. I mean, humble myself. And we're going to live under God's authority. 
you're going to see that God can do great things. Hey, love you guys. I'm thankful for you. I, 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 th I hope I can serve you. I hope that these devotions are acts of service to you, that you can feel your faith grow and your love of God grow. Love you guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. We're actually going to pick up uh, uh, with um, some good stuff coming in First Peter. So we're going to pick up here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the morning. Thanks.